Before this episode begins, a reminder to send us sounds that you hear around your house and around your world that you love. Sounds that evoke some kind of meaning or some kind of story or some kind of ritual that you have that adds enjoyment to your life. We want to do a show including your sounds. They can be simple sounds, sounds of a door opening, sounds of the jangle of keys, what your car sounds like when it starts up, whatever it is, the sound of the birds outside, whatever it is that you hear that makes you feel something inside. We want to hear those sounds. Record them with your voice memo app and send them to bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. Also include a description of why that sound means something. You can either record that with your own voice or write it down in an email and we'll read it. But we want you to participate in this episode. And we look forward to hearing your sounds. Welcome to Rome. This is The Bittersweet Life with Katie Sewell and Tiffany Parks. Hello, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. And today, Tiffany, I have some news for yes. you. Yes. As of officially yesterday, Derek and I have booked tickets to come to Europe. And oh my specifically, God. <laughs> to specifically be in Rome. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, Europe is a big place. Like, <laughs> where in Europe are you going to be? Well, we're going to end in Rome. We're not going to be in Rome the whole time. So we're, we're going to, we're planning on traveling for about three weeks, but we're going to fly into Berlin. And Ooh, then we're going to f- fly out. You're going to visit Berlin? Yeah, we're going to be there for a couple of days, I think. Yeah. That's a really cool city. I love Berlin. I've been there like three times. I really like it. Yeah. And then we're going to take a road trip and we're going to end in Rome. So we haven't really mapped out everything that's going to be in between yet. Uh, we know that we're going to go to Prague. So we're going to ah. go from Berlin to Prague. That's going to be our first stop. But then we'll somehow meander our way and end up in Rome, probably at the beginning of May is the plan. That is so exciting. I'm so excited for me and I'm so excited <laughs> for you because the road trip sounds awesome. Prague is one of my favorite cities. Berlin, I love the idea of a road trip. There's so many possibilities in such a small geographical area. You're just going to have an amazing time. And I'm super excited to see you. I knew you were planning this, but to hear that you've booked the tickets is very exciting. The interesting thing also is um, that, as you know, if you've been a longtime listener to the show, that the reason we got to live in Rome for a year was because Derek got accepted into this study abroad it's it's not really a study abroad program but it's like a scholarship it's a a fellowship yeah i guess it's a fellowship where they pick just a hand selected group of scholars to come and study in rome for a year and he got selected to be part of that group and this year around the time when we arrive in rome his particular year that group of people is having a reunion so he's going to be able to see a lot of the fellows that he was with that whole year while we're there. So that'll be fun. That's very fun. Trip down memory lane. Yeah. Uh, The idea of a road trip really was, one, we we discovered that flying into Rome, originally we were just like, we'll fly into Rome, we'll fly out of Rome, right? Uh, But we found that flying almost anywhere in Europe was about the same amount of money. And it was also the same amount of money for us to fly into one spot and fly out of another spot. So that's the first thing we figure out. Also because of COVID and all, who the heck knows, it just seemed like planning on hopping one train to another, to another, to another place felt like could be fun or it could be like really unpleasant depending on how Mm -hmm. locked down everything is. And it would be so much more fun to just be mask free in the car driving. Yes. So I don't want to tell you how expensive gas is right now. I'm just not <laughs> going to tell you. I just don't look it up. Okay. <laughs> I know we've already, we've already thought about that. Certainly. I'm, this is, this is not going to be the cheapest trip by any means. I think one, because we planned it sort of last minute. Secondly, I, because of the gas prices. And of course, thirdly, because it's not, not 
heading into the height of tourist season. So it's it's getting there. Yeah, it's, it's almost, you know, in Italy, that's high season. May is high season in Italy, maybe not in, in Germany. I don't know. I know. So that's a little bit of concerning when it comes to where are we staying? Mm -hmm. But Derek's a pretty uh, savvy traveler and he's pretty good at figuring things out how to save money here and there. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Here's hoping for the best. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be fine. And you know what? You haven't traveled like a, a, a big trip like this, I feel, in a long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I haven't like, been I mean, anywhere. you've taken a lot of little side trips. Like you've been to South Carolina and you've, mm -hmm. you, I feel like you've been maybe to California. I know you were, yeah, you were in LA, but I mean, like you haven't taken a, a big family trip like this in a while. And you deserve to have an amazing trip. And if it's a little expensive, we'll just work it's harder just money. when we get home. Yeah, yeah it's just money. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah. you know, sometimes you got you to gotta splash out a little bit. We've saved a bunch of money in the past couple of years because we haven't been able to go anywhere. Um, All right. <laughs> and, and, you know, including uh, out to dinner or out with mm -hmm. friends or anything. And so in that regard, the accidental outcome of the pandemic was that we saved a lot of money that we would have spent otherwise on just there you go. hanging out. So yeah, so I'll mm -hmm. be there. And, and it's good news for the show as well, because you know me, I come to Rome, I'm going to be dragging you out into the streets, and we are going to be doing a whole Roman series Oh, I can't wait. Which will likely kick off sometime mid-May, possibly June. We'll see. We'll see. So we'll all be, in a way, traveling to Rome this summer. Yeah. Speaking of, send in your, your suggestions. If you have any suggestions about what tours we could do out in the city. I mean, we've done Trastevere walking episode through Trastevere. We did a yes. Caravaggio episode. We did a rain episode where we like recorded out in the rain. And of course, we did our <laughs> five senses episodes which i think are listener favorites and some of my favorites as well mm -hmm. if you have any ideas of what we could do out in the streets of rome send them in and we will consider them yes yeah, so we did the caravaggio tour as well yeah we'll take any and all suggestions bittersweet life podcast at gmail.com how do you feel about being back here after so long okay first of all let me ask you this Okay. How, ma how many years between when you left Rome after you lived here and you came back in 2018? Mm -hmm. so and I, how many years from then until now? It's about the same. Well, actually, Is that's it? not true. That's not true. So we left Rome in, in 2014. Lived there. We mm -hmm. lived there the year 2013 to 14. And then I think that we came back. 2018. It is four years. It's four no, no, years no, no, each no. time. No, because Derek and I came back together before I came back alone in 2018. That's true. But it was it was only like one year later. Right? Yeah. Because Aurelio had just been born. So. Right. It was one year later. Yeah. And then I came back in 2018 and spent that month working with you. And then I haven't been back since then. It's been so a So this is the longest you've been away. This is the longest. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. I'm really looking forward to being back. It's cool. weird. It's well, one of those things like when you go back to a, a place, particularly an ancient place, you know, <laughs> where certain things are not really changing all that much. And I guess unless it fell over, the Pantheon's still going to be there and it's going to look relatively the same. I think that it will have that combination of, I don't know if you have this experience too, where if a place feels so much the same, it almost can feel like you were just there once you're there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's almost like being in the dentist chair, but the opposite, like not as fun. But you know how every time when you're sitting in the <laughs> dentist chair, you you think to yourself, wasn't I just here? Wasn't I, I just here? I, I, <laughs> For sure. How, how did I end up here again? Like it couldn't possibly, <laughs> a, enough time could not have gone by. And I do think that sometimes revisiting places, especially unchanging places can feel that same way. You just become the person that you are there. But yeah, at the same point, you know, I like the person I am there. And so I'm looking forward to doing that again. Yes, that's super exciting. Yeah, I always feel like I always wonder what it will be like for me when I go back to Boston one day, because I know I'll go back because mm -hmm. I really love Boston. It's just I haven't had the opportunity to go there. I haven't had a reason to go there. Mm -hmm. I don't have any really any friends left who live there. You know, I lived there for a good chunk of my life. I lived there for four full years. Then I went away to grad school, but I would come back for like the entire summer. I had a, my boyfriend there at the time. So it was like every month I was in Boston. And then after grad school, I moved back to Boston for another year and a half, two years, maybe. 
I mean, then I moved to Rome. I have not set foot back in that city in 17 and a half years. And I'm so curious, not just to see how the city has changed, because I know it has changed. Like when I was living in Boston, like the big dig was going on. And now it's, you know, like done, I guess. And all sorts of new stuff has popped up. And I just feel like, what will it feel like to be back there? Will I feel disoriented? Will the places feel like I remember them? Like there are certain places that I spent a lot of time. Like I spent a lot of time in Copley Square, for example, or I spent a lot of time around Symphony Hall. And I wonder if those places are going to look like I have them in my memory. You know, I have those places in my memory, but sometimes your memory plays tricks on you. My guess, I have never been to Boston, by the way, the one major American city that I have not That's been crazy. to. That's crazy. But my guess is that it would be pretty different. That's mm-hmm. just my guess. I mean, how, what do you feel when you come back to Seattle? You come back here more frequently. Seattle is different for me because I didn't, I never lived in Seattle proper. You know, Mm. I never lived in the city. I always lived in the suburbs, Mm -hmm. but the suburb that we grew up in is very different. You know, I spent some time there, as you know, in 2018, I stayed with you, you and your parents for a night or two. And I found driving around Mercer Island to be disorienting. It felt weird. Yeah. It felt like something was Like, I was like, this isn't supposed to be here. There's something else that's supposed to be here. You know, like that old, little, tiny, old fashioned, like 1970s strip mall is gone, (laughs) you know? And, um, you know, certain, I mean, then certain things are exactly the same, like the Albertsons and that big park right in front. Like, that's identical. Albertsons is gone now. Oh, it's gone. (laughs) Okay, never mind. It was there in 2018. No, but like the Dragon Park and, uh, you know, certain things. Yeah. I mean, I'm just guessing, having never been to Boston, so obviously I don't know anything, but I'm just guessing that it probably has changed quite a bit in that 17 years. Not that you wouldn't recognize it, but that you would find that there were a lot of things there that weren't there before. This is actually a, a thing that I think about a lot when I think about traveling to Vietnam, because... When I used to go there twice a year, it was almost like it's a different time period. When I think about that period of time, it almost feels like it was a lifetime ago or somebody else's life, a different like a different life. era. A different era. And I think that if I were to go back, particularly to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, which has had an extreme amount of development since I was there, from what I understand, that I fear And the reason why I have not planned to go back is I fear that I would find it to be a completely different place. And I almost want to preserve the place that I remember it as Mm -hmm. in my head, you know, not overlay the new fancy metropolitan city that has grown in the years I've been away, but remember what it was like before it got developed. And Mm -hmm. not that it wasn't developed, it was always a big city, but I've heard from other people I know that have gone back that I could stand on the corner that I stood on every single day when I was there and I would almost not recognize where I was. So I I don't know. And then, you know, you think about the people you knew there. They're all 17 years older than they would have been when you were in Boston, you know, and so are they still around? Are your favorite restaurants still there? You know, uh, all of these things are time capsule in your mind, but possibly not actually in existence anymore. Yes, for sure. And that's, that's the risk. I totally get what you're saying about when cities physically and in a very real way change, you know, like Mercer Island, I've, I've experienced that. And even a few areas here in Rome, although I was sort of here for the transformation, but what I wonder what's more freaky that, or when something hasn't changed, but you remember it in a way that is wrong. For example, in 2018, when I was in the States, to promote my book, I went back to my elementary school. Mm. You know, I talked to the students and I talked about my book and I did a presentation there. And I mean, I hadn't been back there probably since I, you know, finished fifth grade. It really hadn't changed. That school really has not changed. But I was like, oh, I thought that that was, I thought that this thing was over here. Like, you know how like your mind will move things around because you can't quite remember exactly where something is. Like if you've ever tried to like draw a picture of your childhood home, you can't quite remember exactly how, how it's laid out. Like, you know, the bedroom was here and the other bedroom was there, but do you know like which one was first or, you know, what have you? Mm -hmm. So I felt like that a lot about my elementary school. 
And I feel that if I were to go to Boston, like I, even though I'm sure Boston has changed, particularly the waterfront, I know the waterfront has changed. There's like a whole new park there that didn't exist. And, but I feel like Copley Square cannot have changed very much because, you know, it's like surrounded by historic buildings. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm going to stand in that square and it's, it's going to be the same, but I'm going to have remembered it wrong. Yeah. You know, because I've relied on my memories for so long now that I, they're not trustworthy anymore. Yeah. And maybe that's okay. Maybe discovering yeah. that it's different is okay. I remember one time I got to go into my childhood home years after we moved away from central Minnesota. And it just so happened that I was in town and the neighbor that lived across the street was outside and the house itself had not been moved into by somebody else or uh, someone had just moved out. But either way, that neighbor across the street had a key to the house. Mm. And I said hello and reminded her who I was and uh, found out she had a key to the house. And I said, can I go in? Will you let me in to go walk around? And I was just shocked. I had the layout right, but I was shocked at how much smaller it felt than what I remembered. And the cool thing was that I went into what was once my bedroom with its goldenrod colored carpeting. (laughs) And I laid on the floor, you know, in the middle of the room, remembering. And then I looked over and underneath the heater, we had, you know, baseboard heaters in there. Uh Underneath the heater was a small Fisher Price man who was, of course, one of ours. <laughs> no way. How many years had passed? I don't think it had been so many. I think I probably was, um, we moved when I was going into the fifth grade and I probably was in middle school, sixth grades. It might've been just a year or two. Um, oh, okay. I was thinking like this happened like recently. 400 years later. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the Fisher Price still... man was still there under the like, base. Do they ever heater. clean? <laughs> people ever clean underneath the heater no (laughs) like they do no they do not um but yeah but that was only the only surprise was really how much smaller the house was and of course that's partly just because I'm bigger you know you're bigger yeah I I felt that same way about my my elementary school that I was like I feel like these this walkway was bigger back then when I was little you know they've made it so much smaller now (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah they've changed it all why did they do that I wonder yeah yeah it is interesting I don't see I don't think there's anything in Rome that would surprise me in such a way if I was there or that would be yeah, like the equivalent there, of disorienting. No, disorienting. I doubt there is the biggest change that I can think of is Piazza San Silvestro, which you probably didn't spend a lot of time in Piazza San Silvestro anyway. And I'm not even sure when they changed it because Piazza San Silvestro, it's like this big rectangular shaped square not far from the Trevi Fountain, like to give you sort of an orientation. Mm -hmm. And it used to be one of the main capolinie, which means like it's like the first stop of a whole bunch of buses, like city buses. Mm. Maybe 20 different buses had their first stop there. So it was always full of buses just sitting like idling, like waiting to start their shift or whatever. Mm. And they have completely gotten rid of all the buses. There's no bus stops there anymore. They put in like, it's a pedestrian area. Now they put in some benches, you know, it's still, you know, not one of the lovelier squares in Rome, but it's much nicer now. There's like an Apple store there now. Mm -hmm. And the other big square that maybe has changed is Piazza Cavour, which is over in the Prati side. And Again, I don't remember what, when the change happened, but I remember seeing it and being like, what has happened here? (laughs) Because I don't go, you know, I'm not in Piazza Cavour very often, but just, I remember for years, it was just like, you couldn't go into it because they were doing something. They're doing some work there. And so it was all covered up with tarps and you just, you didn't go there. And then all of a sudden I went back there and it was gorgeous. They transformed this big, ugly square into a garden with palm trees and benches and soft grass. And it's like totally lovely now. Wow. That's nice. That sounds like a good improvement. That's uh, very good. I guess that's what you hope for. If you go back to a place that they've made it better somehow than made it worse. Uh, yeah, ideally. And I guess that's all subjective. You know, it's all about what you personally like better. 
You know, it's kind of yes. like uh, how I often say that I don't like the kind of new construction that they're doing in Seattle right now. And I'll be like, well, it's just so just so soulless and, and boring, I'll say, or something like that. And, Derek, and I'll be like, and everybody feels that way. And Derek's like, everybody does not feel that way. Tons of people <laughs> want those homes, and that's why they're building them that way, you know. I know, but they shouldn't <laughs> want them. <laughs> <laughs> they should want the charming little old-fashioned houses like the one I have. Yeah, bring back the Victorian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's very practical. Right, right. <laughs> so practical. Well, I will be um, seeing you relatively soon. The really nice thing, uh, for those of you listening, is that Tiffany and I have made the insane decision, at least right now as we're recording Uh-oh. this, we're sticking what to this decision. What did I decision, promise? What did I promise? That we, rather than taking any time off like somebody would on a vacation, we mm. are going to aim to have brand new shows the entire time I'm away, which is uh, going to be a lot of work. And I'm not exactly sure why we And you know why we do it? And you know why we do it? (laughs) Why? We do it because we don't want to let our listeners down. That's true. Because they count on us every Monday and Thursday for new content and uh, new episodes. And we provide. Right. So I'm going to be working... (laughs) overtime editing tape you know bad dash scramble and you're going to be working overtime trying to get all the or- episodes organized and laid out it's just so it sounds as if I'm here just like I'm always here week after week after week so I hope you enjoy it I hope it's a uh, fine adventure yeah. it will be worth it and it, yes. uh, you know it's the least we can do for the most loyal listeners on the internet Yes. So please do uh, us a favor and uh, share the show. Tell your friends about it. As people start to think about traveling or thinking about life, don't keep us a secret. Spread it out. Spread it all over the place. Spread it like yeah, mayonnaise spread and the mustard. Word. Uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy. If you, Unfortunately, Apple Podcasts seems to be the only app that will accept reviews. So if you have an Android, you're kind of off the hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... If you have a friend who has a, an iPhone, you could like just grab their phone and go on their Apple podcast app and review it from there. Be creative. But all you have to do is just go on the Apple podcast app, find us, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see a little thing that says rate and review. You know, you might want to give us five stars, but it's really the written review that helps us get our show in front of the eyes of more people. So please take the time. It really doesn't take long. You can write just a couple of sentences about why you like this show. And it really, really does help. And you know, you know what else you people can do? People can, there are so many ways to support our show. Even if you don't want to spend any money, you can also just share it on your social media page. You know, mention that you're listening to our show, put a link in there, tag us. I mean, all of this helps. Yes, it all does. And we appreciate you for it. And uh, yeah, and send in whatever suggestions you have of what you want to hear Tiffany and I talk about, explore, see, do for you while we're in Rome. And we'll all plan to spend the summer in Rome together. And until next time, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. Join us again. Bye. If you love this show, support it. For as little as $5 every month, you get to hear two bonus episodes and even say hello during upcoming meetups online. That's every month for as little as $5. Visit thebittersweetlife.net and click support to explore ways to pitch in to keep this show you love on the air. Mm-hmm.